All right. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, good morning. I hope you are doing well. I hope you had a good weekend. Uh, all right. Let's just uh, start off with the word of prayer. Can I request uh, one of us to please lead us in uh, prayer, please? Father, we thank you for this day. Once again, Lord Jesus, we come before you and we submit each one of us in your hand. And we begin the class, Lord God. I pray that you help each one of us to understand everything, Lord Jesus, and that um, take this lesson and use it in our life, Lord God. Be with each one of us and let your spirit speak to each one of us as we open our heart to you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Dave. I appreciate it. Uh, all right, let me just quickly share the screen and we get started. Okay, okay so uh, today uh, we'll start with chapter six. Um, it's titled Understanding Youth Culture. Okay, we finished chapter five last week. Uh, we in la in the last class, last week's classes, we learned the challenges that a youth leader, a youth pastor faces, and and then we learned a few challenges what uh, the youth are facing uh, in this day and age. Okay, um, so with that in mind, we'll uh, flow into chapter six, uh, understanding youth culture. Okay, um, a culture. I, it, it, it's it's a it's it may seem like a word that's being used a lot, uh, you know, for with with, with anything, uh, uh, you know, in in terms of language, in terms of where we come from, uh, in terms of a geographical location, or where we, you know, and uh, we we speak so much about Indian culture, uh, and, and whatnot, right? But then, if you just you know, just take that word into a certain context and study it a little bit more deeper. Uh, and it, it's uh, it, it's it's vast and it's so deep, isn't it? Um, like for example, as soon as you you know, when I ask, let's say for example, uh, you know, in the, in during the first year, I met most of you all, and and uh, you you would introduce yourself, and then you would also tell where you are from, right? And also, you know, on a personal note, when we meet one on one. Uh, not necessarily in a group is like, you know, oh, hey, my name is Kanan. Uh, and then I would ask, okay, hey, Kanan, uh, where, where are you from? And you would say, uh, he was from so and so places. And then you immediately start having conversations regarding the culture of the place where he is from, right? I mean, or uh, wherever, you know, uh, any individual that you might come across, right? For example, uh, anyone says that you're from Bengal. Uh, or, you know, it's like, oh, wow, you know, I like the sweets from there. They're supposed to be good, isn't it? Um, it, it get what I'm saying, isn't it? Um, it's that you identify, you immediately try and relate to the culture that's existed for a while, right? Culture comes with some kind of a recognition, reputation, uh, with a lot of history, right? Uh, why do we know that Rasubulas are amazing in Bengal? Bengal, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, what else? Let's do. Or biryanis are great in Hyderabad uh, because it's there's been a huge, uh, you know, long-lasting tradition, history, etc., uh, etc. Et isn't it? Um, and that's how a culture is built. Okay, culture is not built overnight. It takes decades and decades, right? Years, uh, you know, to get in uh, to build something. Um, you know, it, depending on what context is. And similarly, when we look at all these different uh, co contexts of culture, uh, you know, a, a certain company will have, a, an organization will have its own culture. Um, and every church will have its own culture, right? There, there could be, you know, so let's say, for example, okay, this is, uh, you know, this is a church that has a very strong healing culture. Right now, everybody believes in, in, you know, in the healing and deliverance and everybody will go out praying for one another because they believe uh, in, in the culture you know, of healing uh, and, and it's being taught from the 
from the seniors, from the elders, from the pastors. Uh, right? Another church might have a very strong culture of community. Right? I mean, it's all about community for this church. Like they love coming together, have that time of fellowship. It's all about, you know, a building community uh, and, and all of that, et cetera, et cetera. Um, okay. Um, what else? So what we're trying to get at in this chapter is I'm trying to understand what the youth culture is. Okay. Uh, what we need to realize is if we don't create cultures as leaders, a certain culture will be set for us. Okay, that's the purpose behind this chapter is understanding uh, the youth culture is. Uh, it's very important that you, if you as a leader, if you as a pastor or youth leader, whatever, if you don't set a culture that you think is healthy for the church, uh, an unhealthy culture will be created for you. Okay, it could be a culture of gossip. It could be a culture of uh, backbiting, uh, which is not nice, right? I mean, any all kinds of anything. So a culture is related with both positive and negative, right? Um, so you can create a healthy environment, atmosphere, a culture. You can. Uh, there's also chances of people creating a negative, unhealthy culture. Okay, so it's very important for us to understand the importance and the significance, uh, you know, of creating a culture. And now, in our context, we're going to make a little bit of an effort to understand what is the current culture of the youth uh, across the uh, globe and in our nation. Okay, so that's that's the premise of this whole chapter, basically. So uh, let's look at it. How do young people learn? We must first understand before being understood. Okay, we must first understand before being understood. This is so crucial. Uh, why and why I say this is because uh, we, I think, sometimes as leaders, we can be very quick to make a statement saying, "Oh, these young people, they don't listen to us. They don't understand at, us at all." Uh, but what we must uh, realize uh, is that we must first understand them before wanting to be understood. Okay, and that's how uh, you know. That's how we begin to relate with one another. Okay, so we must first begin, uh, first understand before we, uh, we uh, before uh, being understood. Okay, our present culture is like a shifting shadow in the afternoon sun. Okay, the frequency at which this generation experiences change is incredible. Okay, the frequency at which this generation experiences change is incredible. Um, Wait, guys, I'm hearing some noise. And I... Sorry, my apologies. Sir. I don't know, how is that happening? Okay. Okay, um, it goes on to say we see more changes in one year than the whole of last century put together. Right? Uh, you guys realize how, imp uh, how important uh, uh, that statement is? We see more changes in one year today than the whole of last century put together. You know, last century is from 1900, 1900 all the way to 2000. The, the studies say that they saw the people who grew up in those generations, like even some of us, right, towards the end, there was very little changes. And there was hardly any changes. And most of the changes happened in the, you know, from the 90s onwards. <clears throat> but for the huge part of that century, there was not much change. And here the studies say nowadays that there is change happening every year. Right, the change is happening in every field, every sector, in uh, in IT, in, you know, in technology, in you know, what whatever you can think of. Right? You know, right? you get you, there. Are, there's a new phone every month. There's a new brand of phone every month. Uh, there's a new brand of vehicles, cars. Uh, there's so many options, right? And all of that is a, res a result of a change, isn't? It? So, uh, and all of this is affecting and impacting the culture of today's youth. 
Okay, so let's take a step back and uh, and look a little bit at you know we saw a little bit about the last century, right, to 1900 to 2000. So let's see, uh, let's break down uh, of how the uh, generations, uh, you know, what they were known as and what they were called as. Okay, just to understand a bigger picture. So uh, generations are now typically defined in 15-year time brackets. Okay. Oh, so when we say one generation, so they're kind of defined typically in like say 15 year time brackets. So our society is currently made up of five generations. Okay, this is very important uh, guys, please pay attention. Okay, uh, so our, our society currently is made up of five generations. Uh, the first one is called the builders. Uh, who are they? They're, they're the traditionalists, traditionalists uh, the, the silent generation born pre or before 1945 okay they're like the silent generation there then you have the baby boomers who are born between 1946 to 1964 uh, generation x from born between 1965 to 1979 and then comes the millennials right uh, you would have heard this a lot and we will you will be hearing this a lot generation y uh, the millennials between 1980 to 2001 and then generation z uh, the post millennials post 2001 onwards okay so you have the builders baby boomers generation x y and z okay so let's see what uh, each of them uh, are described a little bit more okay so each of these generations was raised in very different worlds right you can argue and say almost literally Okay, each generation was raised in very different worlds. So, what is the simple meaning of that? Have you, you know, have you uh, ever had um, your grandparents say, you know, in my time it was so different. All of this, you know, in my time five rupees was like five hundred rupees. Uh, <laughs> uh, has anyone had something, you know, say that to you? Even your parents, for that matter, you know. Just, Right? And you have all these AC and all of this. You know, in our time, we had to work hard, so hard. You, you, know, you don't know. <laughs> uh, right, so why do they make that statement, which is a fact, is because the, the times change. Right? Uh, like I said, you know, there's, there's so much change happening and so fast. Like, the, even the music that, that sounded, you know, different five years ago, is so different from the music we listen to today. The sound of the music itself changes because everything is changing. Uh, it's, it's happening really, really fast. Okay, So um, each of these generations, five generations that we just mentioned, was raised in different worlds. When I say different worlds, not different planets, but it's like a different world. You know, when we, if, we, if we had a time machine and go back uh, to, say, 1960s or 70s, you'd be like, <laughs> You'd be like, wow, the first thing I will notice is there's no traffic in the road. It's like, what world is this? And you'll see more trees, you know, it'll be amazing. So Bangalore will still be uh, the garden city, I guess. It'll, it'll look like a different world, isn't it? Because once upon a time, Bangalore was known as the garden city. I'm not too sure how it is now. But, <laughs> uh, but yeah, you get the point, right? <clears throat> so the silent generation sacrificed... Okay, this is the generation, right? The first builders, they are known as the builders. The silent generation sacrificed their needs uh, and those of their families. Many of them lived through the Great Depression, British rule, and witnessed World War II. Most of them, right? <clears throat> um, yeah, Thomas, <laughs> I miss the 90s Bangalore. Yeah. Okay, but uh, this is an interesting generation, isn't it? Uh, silent generation is they, they lived through the Great Depression. Now, Great Depression, if you know a little bit of history, it happened in 1929. Uh, it was it severely hit in the US, but uh, I'm sure it impacted the world as well. Uh, it's, it was like, uh, if you remember 2008, there was this uh, very bad recession. Uh, world economy was hit. Uh, you know, a lot of people lost their ho jobs, even in India. But a lot of people lost their jobs and homes in the U.S. and whatnot. So it's like it was like a, you know similar to that. That's Great Depression, okay, where the economy was hit so bad, people didn't have jobs and whatnot. So this generation lived through that very dark period. So it's called not just a depression, but a Great Depression in in world world economy, okay. Um, and they were born through the British rule in India. 
uh, and witnessed World War II. So, and all of that is is not pleasant, no, for that generation to just you know just enduring. Yeah, you know all of this. One person said this. You know, it's it's a uh, it's interesting to study about history, but it's not uh, it's not it, it's not so nice when you're going through it. <laughs> uh, you know, so those people we study about World War Two as history, but uh, people who went through that it, it is not uh, so funny or it's not great for them at all, right? So the their kids. Uh, who who known as the baby boomers? Well, the baby boomers are known as the, the, I mean the, the they are the children of the builders. They're the silent generation, right? Their children, the baby boomers, embraced consumerism. What is what does that mean? What is consumerism? Is it, is it is the pursuit of money and things that is never satisfied and excess. Okay, so that this simply means a lot of greed. Okay, uh, it was a very greedy generation. So it's, see the contrast of the previous generation. They sacrificed. They were willing to give up their lives for their family and their loved ones, uh, right? But the other generation is a stark contrast. Okay, they 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 want to pursue uh, you know just money, and they were not satisfied. Now, pursuing money in itself is nothing wrong with it because you need money to transact, isn't it? That's how we, it happens in we function in this world is we need money to pay the rent electricity bills etc whatnot uh, the bible says it's the love of money that kind of kills the job uh, but this generation wanted uh, a lot of it and more and they were never satisfied that's the danger okay so let's go on so having seen the excess material goods collected by their parents who are these parents the baby boomers right uh, having seen the excess material goods collected by their parents, all unwanted, unnecessary stuff also. Generation X, you see this, okay? they are the children of baby boomers, right? So Gen X and the millennials are more prone to focus on the quality of their lives than the quantity of their collections. Okay? These vast differences can cause generations to misunderstand each other. Okay, guys, this is very important. So I'll read this one more time for us, okay? So having seen the excess material goods collected by their parents, Generation X and Generation Y, millennials, are more prone to focus on the quality of their lives than the quantity of their collections. Uh, they're like, okay, you know, you have all these, you have a lot of these things, but uh, in this generation, they're looking for some quality thing uh, more than just collecting everything and anything. And so because of this, there is a misunderstanding that is created. Okay, so let's look at, let's, let's dive into it a little bit more. So in the 1900s, the average lifespan was 48 because of everything that happened, right? Great Depression, World War One, World War Two, etc. The average lifespan was only 48. Today, it's 78. In previous eras, there were only three generations. It's very important. Please make uh, no, uh, note this, okay? In the previous era, there were only three generations. Three generations means that existed together in, in a society. So, for example, there would be, like, say, your grandparents, uh, you know, your parents, and yourselves. So, three generations, okay, in the previous eras, uh, you know, because of the lifespan. But today, for the first time in history, we have five generations in our families, in our churches, and in our communities. Five. Now, why is that a big deal? You know, why am I stressing so much? You know, uh, the five generations, you know, what's the big deal? Just take a look at it. That's a huge change, right? It it, it causes quite a stir because every generation is pushing to be heard and understood. Every generation is pushing to be heard and understood. Right? Everybody's like, you know, um, everybody, every generation wants to do the things that was uh, what they did during their time. 
right? Uh, they want to listen to, they want to watch their TV shows that they watched back then. They want to listen to the music that they listened to back then. And so this back and forth is happening and every generation is fighting in a way to be heard and understood. And that's why, you know, in when we have a quarrel with our parents and whatnot, we will tell, you know, you don't understand. Right? We say that, yeah, you don't understand. It's not like that. It's changed. And then they will make another point. And then uh, you've been there. Yeah, I've been there many times, right? You guys don't understand. It's it's not how it used to function back then. You know, GPA, Google Pay is genuine. You can pay in Google Pay. <laughs> so even that can cause, uh, you know, quite a stir. So um, every generation is pushing to be heard and understood. Right, uh, especially now, you, you go to certain busy areas, busy market areas. Say, I mean, what I would know is, say, MG Road or Brigade Road, or and advertisement and whatnot. It's it's just so big. Everything has become say big. You know, they they want to be loud. You know, they want to appeal to a certain generation. Every product wants to appeal to a certain generation. Right, uh, they want to cater to a certain generation and whatnot. Um, so that's visually loud. Okay, you're like when I, when I say loud, I'm not just talking about audible uh, sound loud, but then everything is big, everything is like in your face, and it's so loud. And they are loud because they, you know, they want either they trying to get us to, you know, they want their attention, want our attention, they want to be heard, we want to understand them, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and whatnot. And then there is this trend of the headphones nowadays, right? We have Bluetooth headphones. Uh, you know, every say five out of ten person will be walking with the earphones or headphones and whatnot. Uh, what does that do? In an attempt to shun off the loud noise, they just you know uh, solid uh, you know put put themselves into this a uh, box into this bubble, saying, okay, I don't want to, I I want to be in my own world because nobody seems to understand and everything is too loud. You, you see how things are, you know, trying to get balanced. It's, it's, it's the society that we are living in uh, at the moment is uh, enduring a lot, guys. Um, you know, it's, it's a challenging society to live in, in uh, but it's still, it's wonderful. Like people are still nice. People are still good. Um, okay. Uh, I hope you are still with me so far. So, uh, why all of that? You know, why why do we have to understand all this generations thing? You know, so what if it's five? Or so what if the five generations are there? Uh, what? How does it impact youth ministry? Right. So here we go. So the the ability to understand and relate to multiple generations at one time is more crucial than ever before. The ability to understand and relate to multiple generations is very important in this day and age. So what we are trying to go, do now is uh, to, because our focus, our area of ministry is going to be youth uh, and, and more specifically Generation X and Generation, uh, sorry, Generation Y and Generation Z, right? The, the millennials. Uh, we'll try and understand and see what's happening in their lives, right? What is the culture? Uh, what does their culture look like? Okay, so um, uh, approximately say about four four or four years, yeah, I think four years ago, there's this uh, very famous person um, who is a, a corporate trainer. His name is Simon Sinek. Okay, Simon Sinek. Uh, he, he is known for his talks on leadership, et cetera. Um, and then someone asked him a question about uh, millennials. And then he went on this five minute, uh, you know, like on a rant, you know, he said, like, millennials are this, millennials are that, you know, they feel they have the sense of entitlement. Uh, they don't like to work hard. They don't understand. Um, they, they don't believe in, in hard work and, and, and whatnot. Okay. So uh, in a nutshell, what he was saying is that millennials are entitled basement dwellers who are content to let their best years slip past them uh you know that's what basically we don't uh 
millennials don't care right but i when i saw the video something kind of stirred in me because uh you know i i couldn't believe with everything because i am a millennial myself <laughs> right i'm i'm from most I'm some of us from generation y right so uh, me being a millennial myself i was not entirely happy because uh, not everything he said was true uh but that just was my opinion right so we must pay attention to those who make up the millennial generation okay that's the youth in your church that you interact with okay pay attention to them uh you know by getting to know them and discovering the answers to questions like these okay so if if, if you, i'm sure there are youths in your church and you yourself are a youth but i'm talking to you as you are going to be a youth as a youth leader okay so pardon me if i uh you know i know you are young and what not but i'm not talking to you as a youth i'm talking to you as a youth leader so okay um we we must pay attention to those who make up the millennial generation that's generation y and z by getting to know them and discovering the answers to questions like say hey uh, um how do they live <laughs> how do they live you know uh, when do they sleep uh, how do they get here you know uh, where will their paths take them what does their faith look like why why do they uh, why do they not attend church as much as the generations have gone before right why why, uh, why don't this generation attend church as much as the previous generations um, what does their faith look like and uh, what are their uh, what are their belief system when, when it comes to career paths uh, how do they choose their career paths etc etc so we need to get to know them have this have these conversations with them a heart to heart conversation uh, you know and all of that simply because the youth are changing guys okay um, the youth they are changing they are changing socially they are changing intellectually emotionally morally and spiritually okay what do i mean uh, socially like i said uh, one of the examples that we saw was social means like um social media for example why do we say it's social media you 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 can have you can socialize with a lot of people isn't it uh, you can have in facebook was the facebook uh, there was another thing called orkut in, in 2000s um you could have say 50 friends then 100 friends then 500 friends then 2000 friends uh 5000 friends uh you know all all for you to kind of socialize get to know them high talk what not right but that is changing for the youth some of them like to be left alone like you know they want just their headphones they their iPhones they listen to their music or read books and what not so they're changing socially intellectually also they're changing so um they are not hesitate to uh, hesitant to ask some of the questions uh, you know biblically as well for example uh every, anything regarding the bible and the faith you know how do i believe that genesis is true uh, that you know creation is story is true and not evolution uh you know and how do i know that moses wrote the first five books of the bible you know how do you so they are not hesitant uh, or scared to ask those questions they are thinking right that's what it simply means that they are changing intellectually right uh, which is a very scary part when i think about my son and you know the kind of questions he is going to ask me i'm like already sweating thinking about uh okay but they are changing emotionally now there's a survey that was taken i think i've mentioned this before but a lot of young people youth globally are going through a huge uh, mental health problem that is associated with the suicidal tendencies even suicidal attempts depression uh, etc etc a huge survey that was conducted uh, where it shows that they are changing emotionally uh, because of everything that they are experiencing and going through they are changing morally their moral values uh, have changed right um like let's just take two generations before that uh live in relationships was an abomination to talk to but these days you know live in relationship yeah that's cool it's it's absolutely nothing you know um you 
know, premarital sex is fine. You know, I'm just expressing my love to my partner. <laughs> so morally, things have changed. And uh, spiritually, while all of that is changing, there are more and more young people getting hungry and desperate for God as well. Right? So uh, they care constantly looking for answers to life's question. Okay, who am I? Who are my friends? Where am I going? What is my purpose in life? So as if the changes that they are going through itself is not enough, you have the outside influence of media that's kind of shaping their values. Okay? The outside media is shaping their values. Say music uh, and other media, say peer groups, materialism, the desirable lifestyle, substance abuse, rising rare of depression um, and suicide, and finally... The big one, sex with no rules, no consent. Uh, they live in a sex-saturated society. The media tells them that sex is something to be enjoyed whenever, wherever, however, with whoever they like. Isn't that a fact, guys? Yeah, isn't that the society that we are kind of living in, um, which is so, so dangerous? Right, that's and it's so scary to think, isn't it? As it is, like we just we are trying to understand the culture of our youth that they're going through, and we see that they are changing socially, intellectually, emotionally, morally, spiritually, and all of that seems like it's being shaped by the media. Their values are being shaped by the media, right? Now there's a rising case of mental health, the suicidal tendency, suicidal attempts. Uh, the cases have gone up amongst the teenagers and youths and uh, sex with no consent and uh, sex with, with no thinking that there is no consequences uh it's it's so so scary and dangerous right it, um that's the kind of culture that's kind of being set right now and teenagers and youth are longing for love and acceptance uh, you know, they buy into these ideas and look to have their emotional needs met through a few minutes of physical intimacy. Okay, the teenagers and some of the young people who are looking for true love, acceptance, uh, you know, want to be accepted and not rejected. Uh, they, look for, they look for it in all the wrong places and the wrong ways uh, in a few minutes of physical intimacy. And they'll get used, they will be abused. And then they'll feel like they, uh, you know, that they are worth nothing because they were used. And so one thing will lead to another, uh, you know, and and it's like a downward spiral from them. You just keep falling and falling and falling and falling. So all these challenging influences are leading to new trends. Okay, all of these challenges that we just saw, all these changes that the youth, that the teenagers are going through, will always lead to a certain trend. Okay, and so that's what we are looking at, and we're going to look at, okay? Uh, as, it's quite a few, but then I'm just going to, uh, you know, just go through quickly. So these are the, some of the trends that's, uh, that you will notice or observe in this study, in this day and age is uh, secularization. What does that mean? Um, in secularization, religion and the religious values associated with it disappear from culture and are replaced with government ideals and other secular institutions. Religion loses its influence over people as they embrace non-religious movements. Okay, there's been a rise in case of atheists and agnostics openly, right? Uh, in Again, in the last 20 years or so, at least that's in my observation. Um, and young people are not a bold, a bold to tell you know what they believe in, and simply saying that I don't believe in God. I don't. I'm an atheist. I'm an agnostic, etc., uh, etc. Et right. So that that's the one of the trends that's uh, being created. Then the next one is big, right, which is the gender revolu revolution. Uh, gender revolution broadly refers to the sweeping changes that are occurring in the gender system, uh, where the traditional binary categories of male and female are deemed insufficient or invalid 
<laughs> okay so this current trend basically the gender revolution simply means uh people don't believe that there's just two genders male and female why because they, they think it's insufficient and also invalid uh, one of my friends uh, he uh, lives in uh, canada and he was telling that there are approximately i'm not sure if the numbers would have increased but they identify with 35 odd uh, genders there could be more or less yeah let that sink in are you saying you say oh yeah oh yeah roshan but that that's canada canada is so far away it's on the other side of the world you you think india is uh, really that far behind guys right how many of you uh, you know you see india now the movies that are made uh, some of the ads or you see you know uh, people outside boldly boldly saying is like yeah i'm gay i'm a lesbian i'm i'm so and so in india isn't it um so all of that is uh that's another trend that's kind of being set and then there you have this privatization uh, occurs when the government awards its ownership and control of business or property to an individual or individuals that's one thing but um like these are all some of the trends guys i don't want to really go through it but then you can go through it but the two things is uh that i want to emphasize here is the technology revolution and hyper individualism uh this this is huge these two trends that's being set by the changes that the youth are going through so from the last part of the 20th century to the present technology has permeated every area of our lives and become central to how we live work and socialize we have moved from an analog world of isolation to a digital one that is connected globally by the way uh, this was before pandemic right? before the pandemic itself the world was connected isn't it like uh, online everything is technology driven and uh, and we all know what happened after the pandemic this is still happening online right um and then you have hyper individualism what is that uh, it simply occurs when an individual need is elevated above the needs of the collective society okay uh, the individual need is elevated above the needs of the collective society so it's all about me uh, attitude right it's it's i i don't care what um, the society tells um, this is all of that that they believed is in truth i will wear what i feel is right i will do what i think is right even if it's wrong you know um, imagine if murderers start saying or raw you know thieves saying you know i i steal because i feel it is right it's all about me i will kill because that i feel you know it's all about me but feel it's fine for me hyper individualism um and i hope you can relate to all of this and i hope that you 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 seen all of this happen in the world around you and can relate to it in a certain extent and what is happening right now we are just giving words to what you've seen right we are just putting words to what you already know in most cases right um just a couple more points and we'll probably kind of stop um so when we start to drill down and look more closely at the influence of these trends we can begin to understand how and why the local church is also being impacted so we went through all of this the generations what they are going through how they changed what is happening what which has led to all these trends to come to this point when we start to look when we start to zoom in and study and you know at, at the influ uh, the trends uh, uh, that's being influenced uh, that's influencing our young people we can begin to understand how and why the local church is also being impacted and why we as a church need to take notice not just notice but as well as action 
Okay. Uh, it's, uh, one of the one of the saddest scriptures, uh, you know, in the Bible is that it says in Judges two ten. After that, a generation died. Another generation grew up who did not acknowledge the Lord or remember the mighty things He had done for Israel. They did not remember. They did not know Him. They did not acknowledge. That he was that you know that Yahweh was their God, and partially because, and I, or if not partially, fully because the responsibility of passing on the good news, telling what God has done to another generation, that that responsibility falls on us. It is our responsibility as youth leaders, youth pastors, uh, church leaders, to proclaim. Uh, what the God, what the Lord has done to the next generation, that is the best inheritance or anything we can leave uh, to uh, to our kids, to our generations after us. Right? Like declaring the goodness of God and how good God's been in our lives, isn't it? Um, so um, generations are passing away. Will your church pass away with them? Um, this is there's a stat that says by 2030, that is eight years from now, millennials will represent 75% of the global workforce. Will they represent 75% of your church? Right? Will they represent 75% of your church? Um, I'll stop at this point and we'll resume tomorrow um, with the same chapter. Um, and so as 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 I always make a point uh, as, as leaders, as young people yourselves, um, ask God to, you know, give you a heart for the younger generation. Um, ask him for, you know, what he has plan what he desires for this generation and then we surrender ourselves and make ourselves available to do for him to do whatever he wants to do through us right because um, i feel like the lord is asking just like it says in isaiah you know, uh, who shall i send who will go for me and i pray that we will be uh, like isaiah and answer and respond and say i will go Amen. Um, yeah, so that's about it for today. Uh, I hope you were able to gauge and understand um, and relate to some of the things that we studied today. All right, guys. So I'll stop the recording now. Uh, thank you all for joining the class. I'll see you again tomorrow. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. Thank you.